This is part one of a screencast on the periodic table trends. Please have your periodic table available, either the black and white one or the color one. And we're going to take a look at a couple of trends. The first one we're going to look at is metals. It's easy to see from this version of the table that the metals are on the left, and the non-metals are on the right in yellow, and the metalloids in green are in between. So we can view this as a trend. It goes from yellow down here to blue, and everything in between here is kind of in between. So we have metallic character over here on the left, and a non-metallic character over here in the upper right. Metallic elements tend to give off electrons, and non-metallic atoms tend to accept electrons. And it's not hard to visualize that from the periodic table of elements. Let's look at the atomic radius next. As you can tell from the table, just by looking at the numbers, as the numbers get bigger, so do the number of electrons in the various shells. So you would expect that the larger numbers would indeed be larger. So let's look at francium. It does look like a very big atom, and you see 87 electrons around it, and the atomic radius is from the center of the nucleus to the outer shell. So it's not hard to see that this is large, but how does it compare with lithium and sodium here? Let's take a look. Lithium's smaller radius, sodium's in between, and francium's very large radius, as you would expect. It's not hard to see this from the chart, and you probably would not need to copy this. You could just look at the periodic table and guess that. Now let's look at elements that are in the same period, and we'll look at carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. As you can see, the outer shells seem to be very similar in diameters. The only difference is we add one more electron as we go from carbon to nitrogen to oxygen. So there's only a difference of three electrons between these. As we get to oxygen here, remember that we're also adding protons into the nucleus here, so that the nucleus tends to pull the electrons closer to it, remember opposites attract, and these atoms are nu neutrally balanced, and they tend to pull the shell a little bit closer. The more protons you have, the more it wants to pull these electrons in. On this side, since it has less protons and less electrons, they tend to be a little bit far further out. So carbon indeed is a little bit larger in radius than oxygen. And we can see that with this chart here. It says that potassium, for example, would be a larger diameter than krypton over here. But of course, any of these elements in period number five would indeed be a larger diameter radius than any of these. It's probably not too hard to extrapolate that and just imagine the radius getting bigger down here, smaller up here, and you don't really have to have a copy of that last chart available and you don't have to memorize it. Let's take a look at the atom lithium. We've seen this before a couple of times. Lithium, we have three electrons in the uh, first two shells. There's two in the 1s, and then there's one in the 2s shell. And then in the middle, we're going to take a look at it, and we're going to say that it's close to 7 for atomic mass units, so we have three red protons and four blue neutrons. And if we look at the outer shell, we have one electron spinning around. 
And that electron's out there all by itself, and it's easily moved. It wants to leave. It feels all alone out there and wants to find a buddy, or a whole bunch of buddies. So the energy required to remove this electron is called ionization energy. And you get an electron, and then this lithium atom becomes a lithium ion, specifically a positively charged ion called a cation. And it's represented with the symbol Li and on a plus. So if we were to look at a periodic table trend regarding ionization energy, we saw lithium here, who was kind of unhappy, really wanted to get rid of that electron. And we come all the way across here to neon, and it has an outer shell that has eight electrons in it. It's full, it's very happy, as are all of the noble gases. So generally, it is a higher ionization energy to remove electrons here from helium than it is from francium. If we look at francium, you can see that this outer electron in the outer shell hardly has any pull to keep it there from the nucleus. The little protons in here, there's 87 protons. There's just one little electron. It just kind of wants to drift out. Versus neon, you have the 10 protons in here, and you have all the electrons centered around it, and it wants to stay there. It's all happy. So let's look at the trends for the groups and the periods. As we look at the periods here, as we go down group one, which is the alkali metals, we see that lithium here has a little bit higher ionization energy than francium because the electrons in the outer shell tend to be closer to the nucleus. These electrons are further away and they just want to drift off. And that's what we do see here is hydrogen has the higher ionization energy in lithium than francium. And then if we look across the table in one period here, period number two, we see that as we get to oxygen, just like with the atomic size, all the electrons tend to be a little bit closer to the nucleus. They want to stay there a little bit more than the carbon electrons. So the carbon electrons have a lower ionization energy than the oxygen electrons. And that's what we see here with the periodic table. And in looking at this, you can see both trends by examination with the periodic table, just by remembering that these electrons tend to be further away from the nucleus, and these tend to be closer. Higher ionization, lower ionization energy. These want to stay around helium. All the noble gases are very stable. They don't want to lose electrons. These want to lose electrons. This atom is a very large atom. This atom is a very small atom. Thank you for watching this screencast.